In this video, I want to introduce rectangular arrays in AutoCAD and how you can use PyAutoCAD to create rectangular arrays. PyAutoCAD is a module that I already introduced here on YouTube and also on my blog, which can be used for developing scripts that allow for AutoCAD optimization. So you can optimize workflows in AutoCAD by using the PyAutoCAD module. Um, there is already some documentation on our blog that is continuously being expanded and in the link in the in the video description of this video you can find a link to this uh, blog post and, and the documentation contained in it but also our other blog posts and that cover py autocad um, and other um, python modules for autocad optimization i start this example by <clears throat> importing the relevant classes and constructors and methods from PyAutoCAD, this is done here. And then I create an empty template um, by calling the AutoCAD constructor. So this is a new empty template in uh, our currently open AutoCAD session. Then I create a, a points array calling the a double method. A double will create a points array. And basically every uh, parameter here uh, represents uh, a, um, a member of a coordinate set. So this is the first coordinate set, this is the second coordinate set, this is the third coordinate set, and so on. So these are X, Y, Z coordinates of the first, um, let's say, 3D coordinate set. And this is a sequence of coordinate sets. They are then converted to a points array. And these points arrays, they are important for many AutoCAD um, methods. So this is why we use a double of them. For example, in this case, we want to draw a polyline where we can do so by uh, using the add polyline method. And add polyline is a method that requires points array as a parameter. And based on that points array, uh, the, uh, the figure will be created. And what we are doing, we are creating a polyline, which basically is a closed rectangular shape. And if you want to learn more on how to draw polylines in, in AutoCAD with um, PyAutoCAD, you can also find another YouTube video by me. And you can also find uh, documentation uh, with regards to that on our blog. I then create a rectangular array by using the array rectangular method. Um, and it has the following syntax. You call it on the object that you basically want to clone in this rectangular shape. Um, and then you need to specify how many uh, rows and columns do you want to have, how many levels. So this goes in X, Y, Z direction. Uh, what's the distance between the rows, the distance between the columns, and the distance between the levels? So six parameter values that you need to specify. And let's try to do so. <clears throat> I use the rectangular object and I call the array rectangular method on this object. I want to have five rows, five, col five columns at one level, and I want the distance between the rows and the distance between the columns to be 100. And this is what results from it. And what we can see is that this method uses the lower left um, corner of our figure as the base point for this cloning uh, rectangular shape cloning operation. Um, and we don't necessarily want that. So let's look at a different example. Here we are writing a, a method um, that in itself uh, creates a rectangular shape and then clones it using the outer boundary, not the uh, lower left base point for uh, the distance uh, to generate the distance in between. And in this method, we can uh, specify here the, uh, let's say, the, the start point of our rectangular shape, so the lower left the base point of a rectangular shape. We can specify how many rows, columns, and, and, and levels do we want to have. And what is the distance between the rows, the distance between the columns, and the distance between the levels? So we specify here an, um, nine parameter values. Uh, we, 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 and, and based on that, we can create a points array as, as we wanted. Uh, at the same time, um, we are creating inside this function the, uh, the figure that is going to be uh, cloned in this rectangular array. And in this case, it's a rectangle again. The two information that are missing for that is the length and the width of the rectangular figure. So these are here requested in the command prompt as user input. Once we got those, we can create a tuple representing the coordinates of uh, the rectangular uh, polyline. Uh, we use the add polyline function again and pass on a points array based on this tuple. So you can see you can create a points array from a tuple. And then we call the array rectangular um, method on this rectangular uh, figure. 
For then, for that, we again need to specify these three parameter values. But this time, when it comes to the distance between the rows, we add the width of the object. And when it comes to the distance between the uh, columns, we add the length of the object. And in this case, because we only will have one level, we don't um, do any um, summing of, um, of the divisional parameter um, with regards to the distance between the levels, since we also didn't uh, query any height of the uh, object. If we had a height of the object, we would uh, add the height of the object here to have like a cubed form, uh, a cubed form clone um, that uh, that would be based on the outer boundaries of these um, these cubes. But let's look at this one. We we call now this uh, uh, function that we specified as error rectangle. And you can see what it would be requesting in the command prompt. It would also be asking for the length and width of this object. Um, yeah, and what we're doing here, we're going to draw a rectangle that has its uh, start point, its lower left uh, corner point, you could say, at the coordinates x equals 50, y equals 150, and z equals 0. We want to have uh, a rectangle 3 by 3, uh, a rect uh, an array 3 by 3. Um, with only one level, and we want the distance between the rows to be 150, and the distance between the columns, so in y, uh, in x direction, to be 250. So this is the distance in y direction. This is the distance in x direction between the um, outer bounds of these rectangular shapes, and that's what's resulting from this. Um, and the reason why it looks different now is that instead of just sp uh, specifying this distance as 250, we uh, wrote a function that calls error rectangular, specifying not 250 as the distance between the columns, but 250 plus the width of the object, and the width of the object in this case, um, no, plus the length of the object, and the length of this object in this case was 800. So array rectangular is being called with the value 1050, 1050 as the distance between the columns. Um, that, that is the difference here. And we can do the same with a circle. So let's create a circle here. Um, it has a center point at 100, 100. Uh, so x equals 100, uh, y equals 100. Uh, center point is specified with a, a point object. And uh, it has a, a radius of 100. Um, we can create a an, an rectangular array around that too. Uh, so let's do three by three again with only one level. And the distance between the circles, we want it to be 50. Well, this is the result uh, from it. And again, the lower left, uh, let's say, base point of the bounding box of the circle is being used as the start point for this uh, uh, cloning operation to an array. Um, and if we want, like, like in this example, we want our circles with a specified distance in between the outer bounds of the circles. Uh, we need to, again, write a, a small function for ourselves. So in this case, um, we have a function with the x and y coordinate of the center point of the circle. Um, the radius is being asked as a parameter. Then how many rows, columns, and levels do we want to have? What's the distance between the rows, columns, and the levels? This time, meaning the distance between the outer bounds of the objects. Inside this function, um, we are then creating the circle with the specified radius and the specified center point. And then we are creating a rectangular array that has the specified amount of rows, columns, and levels. And the distance between the rows is going to be the, the distance that we want to have between the outer bounds plus the diameter of the circle, so plus two times the radius. And for the columns, it's the same. It's the distance we want to have between the outer bounds plus the diameter of the circle, meaning two times the radius. Um, and with regards to levels, since we're only in 2D in this example, we don't need to specify anything uh, special here. Um, exactly. And we're calling the function here. Um, center point is 100, 100. The radius is 100. Um, so we have a diameter of 200. We want to have th uh, an array 3 by 3 by 1. Um, and we want a distance between the rows to be 50. 
uh, based on the outer bounds, and we want the distance between the columns to be 100 based on the outer bound. And that's what we can see here. So this is the array, this is the object that was created and then cloned into this uh, array. The distance between the rows based on the outer bounds is 50, the distance between the columns based on the outer bounds is 100, and the radius of this object is 100. Yeah, and that's the example um, um, that I wanted to show here. And on our blog, uh, you can find this example. As I said, you can find the link in the video description. But on our blog, you can also find other uh, additional documentation on Chaotica for other object types, other operations, um, and other workflows.